Hey guys, it's Vegas Robbie. We're going to talk about tracking vehicles today, or follow me. We're going to use a DJI Mavic Pro because it represents basically the DJI lineup, and we're going to use the new Parrot Anafi. Tracking a vehicle can be more difficult than tracking a subject on foot or on a bicycle or slow moving because we're dealing with higher speeds, we're dealing with elevation changes, and we're dealing with rapid heading changes. Let's use the Mavic Pro to represent the DJI lineup because DJI dominates the drone market today. The Mavic Pro is an excellent drone, however, it does have challenges when trying to track a fast-moving subject. Now, as of this recording, which is July 28, 2018, we're using Active Track 1. I just learned that DJI has released Active Track 2. I don't know what that means, but hopefully it improves on Active Track 1. With the Anafi, I can tell you that it is a very impressive track drone. However, a lot of guys think this is new technology, but it's not. Basically, the technology in the Anafi is similar to what was in the Bebop 2, which was also an excellent track drone. It just had a poor camera. So let's get into the different types of tracking. DJI does both GPS and or Active track. Active track is optical recognition, which means it's looking at the subject using the camera and trying to follow that subject from an image. The link between the subject and the drone can be weak with active track because if you go behind an object like a tree or if the sun is in the lens, it could cause the drone to lose the subject. GPS tracking, in my opinion, is more robust. GPS tracking uses the coordinates of the drone and then the coordinates of a device of the subject that is being followed. Therefore, if you have an obstacle in your way or the sun, the drone will continue to track that GPS signal. One unique quality of the Parrot Anafi is it uses both GPS and optical recognition simultaneously. What that means is it can center you in the frame using optical recognition, but if it loses you behind an object like a tree, it will use GPS to continue to follow you until it gets visual recognition again, then it will recenter you in the frame. In addition, we have altitude control. When you're going up or down an elevation like we do in vehicles, it's critical that the drone maintain a constant altitude above the terrain. If you don't, you're going to fly right into the ground, and this happens all the time. DJI uses a technology called VPS, or Vision Positioning System. Vision Positioning System works pretty good at slow speeds, like if you're walking, but at higher speed, the downward-facing sensors gets basically a blurred image, and it loses its ability to control height or altitude. Parrot Anafi uses dynamic altitude, as I call it, which means it's using a barometer that's on the subject, whether it's in a tablet or a tracking device. In my case, it's an iPad Mini 4. So as the subject moves up in altitude, so does the drone. And this keeps a pretty good altitude above the ground. It's not perfect, but it's good enough to fly hands off up a 6, 7, even 10 degree elevation at speed, as you will see. I do feel that DJI has gone backwards in their tracking technology from the original Go app with the Phantom 3. The original Phantom 3 did not have obstacle avoidance. Obstacle avoidance adds a lot of processing power or processing load to the drone and to the controller and the app. The P3 did not have to deal with that. And while we're talking about obstacle avoidance, the Parrot Anafi does not have obstacle avoidance. Obstacle avoidance is a double-edged sword. It can prevent you from flying into an obstacle, but at the same time, it limits the performance of your drone dramatically. The speed is limited, control is limited. So obstacle avoidance comes down to personal preference. If you feel more comfortable with it, get a drone with obstacle avoidance. It works fine in a park situation where you're walking slowly. Personally, I find that obstacle avoidance uses battery energy up, and I've been a pilot for a lot of years, so I'm very conscious of the environment around myself and the drone, and the performance limiting factors of obstacle avoidance means I'd prefer a drone without obstacle avoidance. Here we are with the DJI Mavic Pro. We are following in profile mode. Yes, follow backwards is enabled in the app. As you can see, the Mavic Pro easily lost the subject. Here we are with the Mavic Pro in active track, visual track, following from the rear. It's easier to follow from the rear, and I find the DJI drones prefer to follow from the rear. 
you can see it's not really keeping an accurate distance or clock to the subject and it's losing altitude going up this grade so we have to abort let's try that again the Mavic Pro is flying backwards we're trying to soft start this and it's not doing a very good job keeping its distance from the subject try it again doing better this time now I am catering to the Mavic Pro by keeping the speed changes to a minimum it's doing a pretty good job but as you can see we're losing altitude have to abort vision positioning system at speed fails Here we are again trying Active Track. And the Mavic Pro is just having a hard time. Let's try it again. And again. The Mavic Pro is not comfortable flying backwards. Now we're getting some speed up. You can see it's clocking back around to its intended position it's also pulling back keep in mind that during active track the dji products are known to dive towards the subject or fly away from the subject as you can see here it's always a consideration when you're flying a dji drone in an autonomous mode here's a little bit more altitude let's try to get some speed up as you can see the mavic pro is pulling away if you try to change the course direction or altitude during active track the drone will freeze in the air the go app did not do this with a p3 the go 4 app does do this so that means i cannot touch the sticks to reposition the drone like you can with halo solo typhoon and anafi you have to let it go otherwise it'll freeze in the air now you can see it is active tracking me even though it has clocked around to a different position so we're just going to go with this it's a kind of a cool view that was unintended. Now the Mavic Pro is going back to the original position, but it's pulling away from me. Pulling away. Opening the distance up to the subject. Mavic Pro has moved away from the subject. Now it's diving back in, coming around the rear. Now it's starting to come back, although it is flying away and it does not have proper altitude control, so we need to abort this. Active track flyaways can be common. This is a cool shot, so I let it go. Now let's try some GPS follow. Follow Me is in the Go4 app. We now have the Mavic Pro set up to follow the GPS of the iPad Mini 4 that's in the Jeep. As you can see, there's a rubber band effect. It's very elastic. So while it's following, it's behind the subject at this point. It'll rubber band back to where it should be. Let's try it again. Again, Mavic Pro is not responding fast enough to keep up with the subject. Let's try it again. Let's take off slow and see if we can't keep the subject in frame. As you can see, the Mavic Pro was going to fly into the ground, so we had to abort. Here's another attempt at GPS follow. Looks like it's going good. We're losing altitude. VPS is not holding altitude. Have to abort. Now, when I hit the throttle stick, 
The Mavic Pro is flying away, so I have to abort the GPS mission. Here we are back in active track. I have had better luck with active track than GPS follow using the Go4 app. So it's doing pretty good, but we're losing altitude again, so we have to abort. Now remember, I can't give it throttle during the active track mission, otherwise the drone will freeze. Here's another failed attempt at active track. Now let's switch over to the Parrot Anafi. The Parrot Anafi is using both GPS and visual tracking at this point. I am completely hands off. The altitude is being controlled by the barometer device in the vehicle. X and Y are being controlled by GPS coordinates and Z is being controlled by the barometer in the device. As you can see, the Parrot Anafi is tenacious on the subject. I'm getting over 25 minutes of flight on a single battery with the Anafi, so we're going to speed this thing up. I am not using a controller with the Anafi, I'm simply using the iPad Mini 4. The Parrot Anafi also has some special follow modes. This is Boomerang. This is Follow Boomerang, which means basically it's following me, and I set it up for a 60-meter boomerang. So it's going to go out and then come back. Now remember, the Anafi is not only following me in X and Y, but it's also following me in Z. So as I descend in elevation, so does the Anafi. Let's speed things up again. After the boomerang was completed, it goes into a simple follow mode. I am using the tablet to nudge the Anafi where I want it to go. Now we're going to do a follow orbit mode to the left with the Anafi. Now a follow orbit to the right. Anafi really sticks on target and keeps that elevation so that you're not having to work the throttle stick. We'll be doing more comparisons and more follow modes in upcoming videos.